Most people's taste buds, especially our people, are dysfunctional and immature. And so the things that they like are sweet, crunchy, salty, creamy. Yeah. We're sure. in love with those things. And we will literally say we love whatever food that's attached to. But those foods don't love us back. They're actually toxic to our health. And what I mean by that is this. And I think this is a really important part of the conversation. Is that if you look at the science when it comes to minorities, black and brown people, 70% of black and brown people are lactose intolerant. Mm. They do not tolerate dairy in any form of it. That's 70% of us. Okay. Okay. And so that's the science saying that dairy just doesn't work for us. The other thing that I think is important is that a lot of the, a lot of the issues around asthma, a lot of the issues around gut issues are attached to dairy. And a lot of the dairy that people are consuming, they're thinking it's coming from this healthy cow. It's not coming from a healthy cow. And it's coming from a cow that has been pumped full of hormones, uh, bovine growth hormone that's been pumped full of antibiotics because a lot of the, the, the cows are sick. And so whenever you get that milk and it's coming from the teat of that animal, these animals are being pumped year round. They're being impregnated year round because a cow like a human can't produce milk unless they're pregnant. Mm. And so these dairy cows are constantly being pumped every day using machinery and it's causing these teats of the animals to become inflamed, to become infected. And so that's getting in the milk as well, as well too. They should love me some milk. So it's not true that you don't get taller off of milk? That was a false Man, market. You, you'll notice that they- so I, I shot up like six inches in the summer, bro. No, he, no, no, no. Listen, milk is baby cow growth formula. It's designed to take a hundred pound cow and to make it a thousand pounds in about a year and a half. Mm. It's going to make you grow. Right, okay. But it's not meant to make you grow. Right. It's meant to make that cow grow. Mm. So the composition of what is in milk for a cow versus the milk in the breast of a woman is very different. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not only going to make you grow here, but it's going to make tumors grow in your Mm. body. It's going to make cysts grow in your body as well, too. And that's what we don't realize even when you're consuming milk that doesn't have hormones in it. Yeah. It's designed for a cow versus our milk. If you take a human's milk and try to feed it to a cow, that cow would die. Mm. It's insufficient for its needs. Yeah. But if you switch the switch the two, now you start drinking cow's milk and then you get a tumor. Hell yeah, it's gonna grow. Yeah. It should grow. Cause it's desi- that's what cow's milk is designed to do, make you grow and expand. Mm. So what's the thing about if you don't eat meat, you don't get the protein. Like you, you like an ox. T-boy. Y'all big dude. Like it's like I'm like, well, I'll see some strong dudes. Like yeah. y'all taking protein. Like we, like man. So here's the thing. This and this is what people don't understand about the whole po- protein conversation, is that you don't need protein. You need amino acids. Amino acids are like bricks, and the protein is the brick house. And what your body does is it literally has to take amino acids and form the proteins. So whenever, say for instance, our liver for, for instance, we can literally regenerate and grow our entire liver in a span of about nine to 10 months, okay? But it can't do that if it doesn't have the right amino acids and the body is toxic, okay? Now, when the body is trying to regenerate new tissues that are damaged, it's important to know it's not using proteins to do it, do that. Whenever you consume animal protein, it is a protein. It's not amino acids. So the body literally has to break down the protein into individual amino acids, glycine, methionine, et cetera. And then it reassembles those into the protein that it actually needs. Mm. So even when you're consuming animal products, it has to break it down to the amino acids. The good thing about plants is that you're going to be primarily getting the amino acids. And we make the large majority of our amino acids in our body without any food. Yeah. And then we need essential amino acids that we then combine with those to make any protein that we need. Got it. Yeah. Let me ask you this. So I told my wife I want to try raw vegan for a week. Okay. Let me work. Let me, because uh, you only raw vegan. No, I, I would say that. I would say I'm about 80% raw. 
All right, so need the eighty percent. So walk me through what can I eat? Because I was thinking, like I was telling them, like because they make me juices now, fresh juices. So normally that could be my first meal juice for me. Okay. One of them Tassili's wraps. I probably could do two of them a week before I'm tired. Okay. I could just do a straight bowl of spinach with dressing on it. That's something I like, just straight raw spinach. Okay. So I probably could do that. But I'm running out of stuff. Like yeah. What else? Who's some other things I could do? I mean. I know you do the quinoa stir. I don't like quinoa like yeah. that. So like in terms of raw, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I want to do like a week of. but that's raw. So that's salads, that's smoothies, that's green juices, that's wraps. And the wrap, instead of using the wrap that they would normally use, at Tassili's you can get like a nori wrap. So I can't use a white wrap? That's not, that's not raw. You also can use a that coconut wrap, which I, I like those better than those wraps yeah. anyway. So you could do that. You could do fruits. I do a lot of fruit. You know, I own a tropical fruit farm, so I'm doing a lot of soursop, a lot of sapodilla, a lot of guava. Let me ask you this question. You mentioned 70 years things didn't exist. I've never heard of soursop till a year ago when you mentioned it. That's always, or have all these fruits always been around or are these new fruits being introduced to the Man, world? Man, you gotta, you gotta understand that us as a people, we're disconnected from our culture. From our culture? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of like what happened when we transitioned here mm. to the US. Yeah. We lost our culture. They, they beat it out of us. They made sure we did. A large part of our culture was our food. As a matter of fact, many of those who were enslaved when they came over on ships, they would take okra seeds and put them in their corn rolls and corn and put them in, the, that's why they call them corn rolls. So they would literally put food in their hair to bring it over here to plant. So we used to be that connected to our food. And if you go back to Ghana, if you go back to West Africa, if you go back to anywhere in the Caribbean, these are staple foods. These are foods that literally grow on the side of the road. Sarasap is something that just grows on the side of the road. Yeah. Papaya just grows on the side of the road. These are things that literally on the side of like I'm just saying in like, the ground, all right. Most people have a mango tree, a breadfruit tree, uh, a star, a mango star tree fruit, sound amazing. Star fruit tree, mm. all these trees in their yard in Caribbean countries. These are things that year round they're just picking off of the tree. Wow. So these are things that we have been disconnected from that we don't understand that is part of who we are in our culture. How's a pomegranate? I love pomegranates. Uh, yeah, They're pomegranate's fishing. real good for the gut. Right. It has a, a bacteria, a probiotic in it called acromancia okay. that most people don't have in their microbiome. And what they found through a lot of cancer studies is that the presence of this particular uh, probiotic, it increases your, your risk or your rate of actually healing from cancer. I want to do, I want to do a game. I want to name a, a food you tell me what it's good for or bad for. Like how you just said pomegranate, good for this. Soursop. Soursop is really anti-cancerous because it's high in fiber, but it's known for its anti-cancerous properties, both the fruit itself and also the leaves. Mango. Mangoes are really good for the gut. They're also good for the hair, skin, and nails as well, too. Watermelon with seeds. Watermelon with seeds, yeah. most importantly. Yeah. Uh, watermelon is really good because it hydrates the body. It's about 92% water. So that's why they call it watermelon. Okay. Great fruit. What, what, one more thing with watermelon. In the, the white part of it, which is probably the healthiest part of it, mm. you have what's called citrulline and arginine. And that actually increases nitric oxide in the body. You know, nitric oxide is what opens up the blood vessels. That's really good for the fellas as well, too. Okay, is that me? Uh, okay. <laughs> what else good for the fellas? Uh, um, grapefruit. Grapefruit. I, um, grapefruit is an astringent, so it pulls things out of the body. I don't use a lot of grapefruit, uh, but it's also um, semi-good for the liver as well, too. What about, uh, I'm eating oranges, clementines without seeds, no good? Yeah, I don't eat anything without a seed. If it don't got a seed, it ain't it. Yeah, let me explain why. Yeah, like, tell me. You can't have a child without a seed. Yeah. Okay. And so, like, even when you get a watermelon and you see just those white seeds, that's not real seeds. Those seeds cannot reproduce. If you put them in the ground, they will never reproduce. Mm. 
And so every black seeds, you could I could bury them and yeah. grow some watermelons. Yeah. So like it's important to know that the circle of life, divine life. God put it in such a way that we everything must come from a seed. Like life is in the seed. Wow. Right. So when we skip around that seed, we're skipping around the process of divine nature. 